Welcome back guys. Today's video is about eyepiece projection. What I have here is a cheap $25 eyepiece projection adapter. The idea behind this is for planetary imaging, you would use an eyepiece in the optical train unlike Prime where you would have your camera attached directly to the telescope with no eyepiece included. This is a 1.25 inch barrel and it's threaded. This could be unscrewed. It's actually multi-purpose. You could uh, use this as a low pro profile T adapter, which is nice. So you get, kind of get two products in one. But this will go into the slot in your focuser where your eyepiece would go normally. Notice there's two knobs here. This is to extend and retract the distance of your camera or imaging sensor to the eyepiece. Now the eyepiece will set in here like this. Just drops in. And in this particular case, you kind of got to let gravity work with you and feed it down. And then you'll tighten it here. Standard T ring for Nikon or Canon, whichever you have. Go there. And you're all set up. So I'll show you some video clips, some actual footage that I took. And during my session, and I'll also explain where I went wrong and try to help you avoid the same pitfalls that I did. So assuming that you don't have a planetary webcam or especially if you don't have the money for it, but you already have a DSLR camera, hopefully this video will be useful. So in this little video clip here, you can see just how far this stands above the focuser. Um, and what will catch you is a sloppy stock focuser. You see how much play there is there? That's over degrees when you're looking through your field of view at high magnification. So that's, that's an issue. And I found also with refractors, it's a little more difficult because of the orientation on the scope and how much outward focus you need with extensions and that sort of thing. And every little bit of wobble is going to affect your, your video quality. So in that particular situation, it seems that as many of these screw knob type connections that you can avoid, the better. And you're ultimately gonna try to get a rigid foundation for this where it's all threaded if possible. So one of the better units, I would imagine that they're, they're mostly threaded. If you had a Crayford focuser rather than a stock focuser, you would be at an advantage here. You see like on these, most of your stock focusers, just they're shimmed and, and they've got like a lot of play in them. That's why collimation is such a pain and that sort of thing. But when you're dealing with magnifications, this great, and extensions this long, you can see where it's torqued down a little bit. That would actually be straight there. When I let my hand off of it, it kind of rides into a bow. That's the weight of the camera on the end of it, obviously. Something you're gonna have to deal with. So it's crucial to have a really solid mount, a, a strong foundation for the scope if you can't achieve it here especially. One of the biggest drawbacks of eyepiece projection is your seeing conditions. And under such magnifications, that's greatly increased. So any bad seeing will be magnified. You can see here, I'm using a Celestron C6R, which is a relatively large refractor. It's 150 millimeter aperture. And it was just unusable, even with the Orion Atlas mount. As the tracking motor pushed the telescope around, vibration occurred from 
the connections being so unsteady. And this was a relatively low power eyepiece that you're seeing. It's just not usable footage. Again here, a low power eyepiece, but look at the vibration that I'm gaining on Saturn. It's totally unusable AVI. And just to show you that balance wasn't an issue, you can see here that the telescope is pretty well balanced, even with the camera attached to it. The trouble is the stock focuser and the outward focus distance that I needed to use the eyepiece projection tube with the eyepiece. So it was unusable with this large refractor. Another issue that you'll run into with eyepiece magnification is in terms of the amount of camera sensitivity to light that you need. It's going to require really high ISO. As you can see in this video footage that's live, I'm at 6400 on a crescent moon. With greater magnifications and higher ISO and exposure time will be required. And that's really obvious in eyepiece projection. So I decided to change telescopes and I used my wide field 130 millimeter Mead light bridge. It has effective focal length of 650 millimeters. With the Newtonian, eyepiece projection worked a whole lot better. Here you're looking at live footage of a full frame camera and prime directly through the 650 millimeter telescope. Not very impressive when you give up the 1.6 of a crop sensor camera. But the gain is amazing when you just look at this 26 millimeter modified Acromat Mead eyepiece, just fairly standard eyepiece, nothing special. Amazing gains there. And here it is with a nine millimeter eyepiece. So this is a really high magnification that I wouldn't be able to achieve with a Barlow lens. So obviously the biggest gain is with a fast focal ratio telescope where you're limited in magnification. On the higher focal ratio telescopes, it's really hard to center the object. And if you're not polar aligned, or especially if you don't have any kind of slewing controls on a tracking motor, I wouldn't recommend eyepiece projection at all. A higher quality eyepiece would obviously give you better results. One of the most difficult things about this is just focusing on an object and keeping it centered. So tracking is really important. If you have a really low focal length telescope that's relatively fast when you start, you may be able to do it on track for a few seconds. But realistically, when you magnify really high, you, you really need to be tracking, you need to be polar aligned. So for all the technical guys out there who are interested in determining your magnification, I'll throw up some figures now. Eyepiece projection method is a great way to maximize the use of a low focal length telescope. If you take this on, I wish you nothing but good luck. And as always, clear skies.